What if I told you you're about to wake up from a bad dream? What if I told you that as much as you've been programmed not to like me, we've always been playing on the same team? And what if I told you that you're not human, but rather a light being and your pineal gland is what you use for seeing? Would you know what I mean? What if I told you we're co-creating a new reality and we're putting an end to duality and our entire galaxy is in on a conspiracy? Would you believe me? I mean, come on deep down, son, would you feel me? <laughs> what if I told you that the new currency will be one of service and in the blink of an eye your dollars will be worthless and out of the chaos will be born your commitment to purpose? And what if I told you that you'll find peace by staying in the heart and remaining humble and this matrix is about to crumble? I mean straight tumble like George Foreman when he rumbled in the jungle against Muhammad Ali who floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. And even though you're not aware that you're enslaved, you're about to be free. And what if I told you that if you look beyond the chaos, you'll see destiny and no matter how far you travel, you'll always be next to me. But I don't have to tell you because you already know this. You already know that this is a time of bliss. We've been planning for many millenniums, so here's to you, son. Welcome to the law of one. Duality no more. Yes, we're the ones we've been waiting for. We understand the process, so therefore we'll never protest the many changes across the face of the earth. The same changes you'll find in a woman when she's about to give birth. So there's no need to curse this. Go with the flow, don't be nervous. Mother Earth is pregnant with purpose, so you best be in service. And remember, you deserve this. For the sun is showing his affection with ridiculous coronary mass ejections. Everybody feels the warmth, no exceptions. So the satellites are beginning to fail and Yellowstone Park is registering 4.6 on the Richter scale. While JP Morgan Chase is foreclosing on his loans and Australia is feeling the floods and cyclones and a UFO's case in Jerusalem dome like, honey I'm home. On Wall Street, they trade souls for dough while South Korea is buried in six feet of snow and the magnetic poles are shifting and the veil is lifting while the real housewives are bawling and the birds are falling but all Egypt here is freedom calling, Yemen is stalling and Syria is vexing, Bahrain is like, yo, we got next. And they're answering the call, formal and informal, as the Weather Channel try to convince me that all this snow is normal. And in D.C., the senators are about to enter, but they're either too far left or too far right as we approach a galactic center. Besides, they're packing too much ego for this spiritual adventure. They're still counting Gregorian time, but we've been using the Mayan calendar. So blinded by their technology, they fail to see the obvious return of the divine feminine energy. So they find it surprising when I say that Atlantis is rising because desperately trying to hold on to power are dictators with iron fists but this new consciousness just ain't having it and it matters not which so called kings and queens are pissed this new energy cannot be dismissed it is futile to resist that which was created to persist that which was foretold in the eclipse a wave of light that does more than merely instruct the darkness to step aside in fact the darkness gets transmuted by the light it's like a divine loving energy that says don't worry kid I got you and immediately start opening your heart chakra make you call your ex and say look I ain't even mad at you I enjoyed the experience before we both walk out the door call your boss and say yeah this paycheck is nice but but I can't do this nonsense no more and your neighbors are saying quit your job in this economy what are you crazy and you're saying nah that's just the way the heart chakra gets down baby in other words if you want your life back yeah there's an app for that because with this new energy you now have a knowing a knowing that you're divinely loved and cared for and with such a knowing you can no longer be chained by paper let your spirit be free free to be what you came to be infinite possibilities and as you step out of your little box that society gave to you the term Jew can no longer define you black, white, Muslim, Christian, Democrat, Republican socialist, black, fisted, independently pissed all meaningless you're beyond definition because you're limitless operating with an open heart chakra so you're selfless now the words that you confess immediately manifest it is impossible for someone to be in your presence and be depressed you smile at a child and she's eternally blessed because telepathically your thoughts get expressed and permanently sewn into the fabric of all that is you see your creator you smile and give a nod because for the first time in your life you realize that indeed you are God Okay, well, you just listened to uh, another wonderful, uh, enlightening segment by Kurt. And, uh, oh, by the way, welcome to the archive section. Uh, and shall we continue, Ramon? Yes. Um, go ahead, Tom. Well, Kurt, we want to 
delve into the message that you're trying to put out a little bit more. Uh, I'm, uh, let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my, my thing is pursue your passion. I have, that's probably my most famous poem. I'm known for pursue your passion. You Google pursue your passion and you'll find this poem. And basically what I'm saying in pursue your passion, that's my message. I really don't believe that we came here to be enslaved by careers, to be enslaved by bills, and just not to live a life that's vibrant and loving and passionate. So I believe we came here and there's something in our heart. And if we can follow that, if we can trust it, if we can be guided, like I didn't know how I was going to make a living being a poet, but I went and I did it and I kept doing it. And that evolved into me being a speaker. And from being a speaker, I could write books, I could put out CDs, do all this other stuff. And I'm saying the same thing to you. If there's something, something in your heart that you're passionate about, something that gives you joy, because you really don't want to get up and for eight hours you go to work, you come home, you make dinner, you do whatever, play with the kids for a little bit, and then watch TV in the same routine. Oh, that's just a dull life. It's not a way to live. So if you find something that you're passionate about and you're willing to, if you can't invest eight hours per day and do it, do just a half an hour and start working into it, start building it, start growing into it. Because once you find that what's in your heart and you start moving towards it, you will start touching lives and changing this planet on such a manner that you will never be able to imagine. Because when I started doing this, I had no idea I'd be speaking to tens of thousands of people and people be coming up to me and, Mr. Nugent, you did this and your video changed that and all these people from all over the world. All I wanted to do was perform my poetry. And I had no idea this would be the backlash, so to speak, from it. And it's going to be the same thing when you find your passion and you start moving into it. You'll be blessing so many people on so many levels. Right. So we do have a, a question from a, get, or a uh, listener, if I can find it here. Uh, the question, I believe it was from Stormy. Yes, it was from Stormy. And oh, she, yes. Yes. Uh, she wanted to know how to deal with people who uh, were, had a different mindset, uh, you know, uh, say, uh, and she didn't get very specific about it, but uh, the, I'm, I'm assuming that, that she's talking about dealing with somebody who is not on a, a spiritual path or a conscious path uh, and how to deal with interact with that person. I'm assuming that she's talking about somebody who is close to her mm -hmm. and how and how to deal with that relationship. Okay. The, the painful part is when we're trying to change someone. When we know, let's, let's blow this out of the box. Let's say you have an idea, you have a premonition, you, you have a knowing that something very devastating is going to happen to a certain part of the country. It's going to be underwater. Let's just use that as an example. And you have family members there, and you're trying to, listen, you guys need to move, you need to come here. But there's no logical reason for them to move because they believe what they believe, and they know all your life you've been crazy because you believe this other stuff. <laughs> but the point is we have to get to a point where we just accept that there are no accidents. We all came here with a certain destiny, and we're all going to unfold that destiny accordingly. So I have to allow the people in my life who, you know, I try to call them, I try to give them hint, listen, I'm watching these videos, I'm seeing these signs, you guys need to do this, you need to do that, and they're very dismissive, very rude, and very impatient. And I have to get to a point where, you know what, it is not my job to try and convince someone of anything. All I can do is put the information out there and let the chips fall where they may, because if I go head-to-head -head and toe-to-toe -to -toe trying to convince you of something that you're not trying to hear, and then on the other hand, you're trying to convince me of something that I know is not true, but you have taken this information through the different media system and you believe it, and they're telling you everything is fine, oh, the dollar is getting stronger, the economy is bouncing back, and you're investing all this nonsense that's not really the truth, then we're going to butt heads, and I'm just going to have to allow you to take your information and send your silent blessing and be on your way, and you're going to have to do the same thing to me. But if, you're, if, if she's trying to change someone and get them to realize that she's onto something and she knows the truth, it's not going to happen. You just have to let them be who they are, who they came to be, and 
just continue to put the information out there, but there's nothing you can do. We said it in the first segment. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. So I like that. in short, it's just allowing. You're going to have to allow them to do what they came here to do. Yeah, that's very true. Um, speaking of, of changes and things happening, um, I, I, I want to talk about this woman who, it, it's in our news section, for those of you who are on the website. Uh, it's called The Indigenous Ecuadorian Woman Who Humbles the U.S. Oil Giant. Um, she led a, a lawsuit against um was it texaco um against one of those oil giants i can't remember who it was exactly anyway chevron um, chevron chevron yeah and she led uh they they received a 9.5 billion fine because of this woman this, so this is an ing- indigenous woman who spanish is not even her first language it's a uh, quechua so it just goes to show for those people who oh, I'm just one person, I can't change the world. And yet this woman, this old lady changed, did a huge strike with no army, no, no arms, nothing. A, a little old lady. Well, Ramon, that's what they want us to believe, that we're just one person. They want us to believe that we're disconnected from the source. They want us to believe that we're disconnected from our higher self. They want us to believe that we have no power and that is not the truth you look around the world right now the energy we spoke about this the energy that's coming in. you look at what's going on in libya where people united said we'll never be defeated you look what's going on or what transpired in egypt and you just look take that and come back to even your personal life and look at the different triumphs that you're having in your personal life and everyone else we're in a place right now where we're beginning to awaken to the idea that we're so much more than we've been told. We're beginning to awaken to the idea that, you know what, maybe, just maybe, I can make a difference. So that idea is very threatening to the system, and it's very threatening to, to the status quo, because they don't want people to wake up. They want you to go to work, pay your bills, go to sleep, and just continue to be this robot and this machine. But something is going on in the matrix, and people are waking up. And I believe that woman, look at everything that's going on in the Middle East. It started with one food vendor saying, you know what, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And just that one vendor, he's still alive, even though he set himself on fire. He, oh, he is. Yeah, oh. absolutely. He didn't die. He, he set the entire Middle East on fire with just that one act. They're going back to the, the story that I told about Amadou Diallo. Amadou Diallo came here, got shot 41 times, and went out. Father figure his life was in vain, but I know that one incident transformed my life to be out here on this stage, just going from city to city, state to state, speaking about pursuing your passion, living life on your terms, developing more love in your life. So absolutely, we have the power to make a difference. And once we recognize that, we become unstoppable. Uh, one of the things that I find uh, amazing is the, um, I'm not sure how real it is, but the whole thing with the, both presidents from Tunisia and the president from Egypt going into coma, comas, I haven't seen any news to see if they're out of coma or they passed away, but what is your gut feeling on that? Do you think that was had something to do with karma or was maybe one of those... Uh, lack of a better word, like uh, somebody went in and slipped something or handshake that yeah, slipped them into know. the I'm thing. trying to decipher in my spirit whether this is some sort of propaganda. Like these dudes just dipped out with their money and said, okay, tell people we're sick, tell them we're dead. Or I don't know, I really don't know. <laughs> because it was very weird to me as well. Like, okay, they just left office and immediately went in a coma. Is there some sort of... A phone call that they got to mention in Canada, is this John? Is this John Albert Murphy? And then all of a sudden, you say, I, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. weird, though, isn't it? it it's, yeah. it's coincidental. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a, lot of that, uh, a lot of that goes on in our world. Now, with as, as far as the... Um, 
the police joining the protesters in Wisconsin. That, I gotta say, I find amazing. I don't think I've ever heard of anything like that in my lifetime. What about you guys? Again, no, not me, not here, but again, Ramon, it's a new energy. We're not, you said it in the first segment, we're playing with a different timeline. We're not, let, let me explain this, because the concept that scientists try to give us is that, okay, you have the central sun, and everything is revolving around the sun, all these planets, right? And the sun, is everything is revolving around the sun. But So next year, February 28th, we're be the exact same place where we were this year, February 28th. We just went around the sun. But that's not true. Think of the, 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 the path that we're on as Main Street, any Main Street in America. And right now we're at 1,000 Main Street. But we're moving several million miles around in, in the galaxy every single day. So tomorrow or, or Friday, we're no longer at 1,000 Main Street. We could be at 37,000 Main Street. We're in a completely different part of the galaxy. And in this different part is a different energy. So the energy that we were fooling around with last year with this victim consciousness is not the energy that we're dancing in right now. And the energy that we're going towards tomorrow is so much greater, so much more magnificent, so much more transforming than the energy that we were in today. So it's only going to get better and better and better. You're going to see a contrast because, of course, certain walls got to be broken down, so you're going to have a little bit of chaos, and certain systems got to be broken down. But the people are beginning to realize the sleeping giant is beginning to stir. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do, definitely are. Um, uh, uh, just this year is. It's um, if you had to define this year, how would you define this year? Even though we're still in the beginning of the year. From what we're saying already, how would you define it, if you had to define it? It's going to be one heaven of a ride. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, think about it. We're, we're, in, we're just about to touch March, right? What have we seen so far this year? I've seen one, what, what was the, I forgot what state this was. It was in a week. They had a difference of 100 degrees in temperature. At one point, they were 32 below, right here in America, and at another point, they were 70 degrees in seven days, 100 degrees difference. Boston getting all this snow. We're getting four, five, six, seven feet of snow all over the place. Then you have places that are completely warm. We're getting a lot more earthquakes. I don't know if you guys have been monitoring what's going on, because a lot of them, they take down off the USGS site. But... Uh, Yellowstone is beginning to show some activities. Uh, Mount St. Ellen is showing some activities. The New Madrid Fall to going through Tennessee and Arkansas. We're seeing a lot of stuff, a lot of earthquakes, a lot of changes. We've seen birds falling out of the sky. We've seen fish washing up in shore. We've seen a lot of different and interesting stuff happening. And we've seen the earth adjusting and shaking. We've seen Egypt fell as far as with the dictatorship, and we're seeing people. And we're, we're not even done with the first quarter so yeah. it's going to be one heaven of a ride hmm. yeah Maddie, uh how about the you're down there close to well you're in georgia so uh florida they're changing the uh numbers on the runways <laughs> runway in tampa absolutely yeah absolutely so we're seeing pole shift and if we well yeah we're seeing a magnetic pole shift and <laughs> we uh, i have to laugh to myself because we haven't even begun to feel the real effects of the solar flares. The sun is just beginning to wake up and stretch and yawn. It hasn't, you know, washed its face and get ready for work yet. It's just beginning to wake up. So give it some time. It's about to be on. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we, are, we are electromagnetic beings. I mean, every, all, our, all our nerve impulses, our brain activity, everything is all electromagnetic. And we are in an electric universe. Absolutely. Um, our heart supposedly has is the the biggest um, electric generator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Are you familiar with the Hopi prophecies? <clears throat> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to remember the. Uh, the blue kachina. 
Yes, the blue kachina. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, we are have you, a, a blue kachina and we have red kachina. There's supposed to be two kachinas. Um, they said after the the blue kachina, that's when the ceremony of my people will, will cease. And now we have two, is it two comments that we believe that's approaching Earth that we're not speaking about? We have, the again, Planet X that if you go... I saw a video on YouTube where a guy went and he had the coordinates when the satellites were first up. Wait a minute, before we get into that, are you aware that all the satellites that steer out into space are pretty much down? Uh, NASA took down their Y satellite, right. that's the one that could see far out. And so then, and uh, the weather channel, weather.gov, said they'll be down for another month, um, their satellites. And it's just a whole bunch of satellites that can show you anything that's happening out there. They're saying, well, they're shutting them down. They're Hello? not showing anything. Uh yeah, it's, 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 I just received this information a couple of days ago. Well, this one gentleman had a YouTube video, and he had the coordinates for this alleged Planet X. But, again, they took the video down. His video was taken down, but someone saved the coordinates. And when you type, if you go to Google Sky and you type these coordinates in, it goes into a black hole. And if you right. zoom back, you'll, you'll see that it was – I did it myself. It was cropped out. Yep, so that little – a square – Exactly, a rectangle. Yep. I've been there. Exactly. So there's something that they're hoping we don't see, but again, you just said it, we're electromagnetic beings, so even if we don't see it, we can certainly feel it. And it's... I see all of these prophecies coming together. I, I don't, again, in... Uh, I need you to remember part two. I was saying it's not the end, it's the beginning. And I was saying we're welcoming the age of Aquarius. There's another age that we're coming in there. You know, people are always fearful of stuff they don't understand. But I believe that the Hopis, the natives, the indigenous tribes, they were onto something. They were far more advanced, far more aware, far more in tune than we are right now with our ego-driven society. And we believe, oh, we, this is the greatest society we've ever had, and we've never had this much technology, and we still can't explain the pyramids. Right, right. <laughs> Is is this the reason why there was such a a, a huge um, plan of exec uh, of getting rid of all these indigenous and all these book burnings and and um, for example when uh, they came over to the Aztec and Inca Empire they were burning all their books and stuff like that is is that probably the reason to cover something up that they were onto. We will never know how far the conspiracy goes, but what we do know is a sense of arrogance where, I mean, think about it. You come and you see people, you're told you had this dude that died on the cross for your sin, and then you come across the ocean and you see some people worshiping the land, and they're worshiping the tree. They're praying to a tree before they take a the fruit off the tree. So, yeah, and they're naked. No, they're, they're idiots. we got, we got to kill them. The, so it's, I think part of it was a sense of arrogance where they just believe at one point when you look at the Inquisitions and the Crusades, okay, we need to feed these doctrine because with this mindset, we can control you. If, if you're running around and you're not concerned about housing and you're not concerned about the Mercedes-Benz or BMW, I can't really control you with much because there's not much that you care about for me to control you. But if I can get you away from the spiritual stuff and get you into this material world, and I can tell you, as long as you're not making as much as your neighbor, Mr. Jones or Mr. Jane, Miss Jane, then you feel inadequate. As long as I can show you an image on the television and say, well, you know, you're not a size zero, so you're overweight, you're obese. And as long as I can show you an image and tell you, keep playing doubts in your mind, listen, are you having this symptom, are you having that symptom, actually, doctor, actually, and I run through a million symptoms until you find one, and you say, yeah, I got that. I, I need some medication, I need some pills. So... <laughs> we have to move people away from their spiritual side. We have to move people away from their divinity and bring them into this material construct in order to, to control them. And I believe right now the energy, the way, the part of the universe that we're moving into, people are getting back to that higher self. People are getting to realize that, you know what, the stuff that I've been working so hard and fighting for and getting high blood pressure and a heart attack over just isn't worth it. The spiritual is becoming real for people instead of Absolutely. being instead of being something that uh, oh we just go to church because uh, the Jones go to church and we don't want to be seen in the community as less than the Joneses and yeah right we're beginning to wake up to the idea that you don't have to be in a building to be in a temple we're beginning to remember that 
we're beginning right. to remember that we don't have to pay to pray. I don't have to pay someone to go to God for me when God is right here. There's no separation between God and me. We're beginning to get back to that. We're beginning to trust that. The kids nowadays, the kids that are coming in, if you notice, they can't be controlled. They're not trying to listen to this garbage. They're not trying to go to school and get good grades to, to become some corporate slave. They're living in the moment. They're doing what they want to do, and they're, they're rejecting this system hands down. So... So you believe this third, if you had to describe this third wave coming in, these kids, how, how, would, you, um, how would you describe them? To the system, they would be armed and dangerous because they cannot be controlled. <laughs> but to us, they are, again, there, there would be another level of way showers because if, if we could see beyond the nonsense, well, see, these kids are the wave that's coming in right now. They can't be controlled. They know what they want, and they're going about that. We're trying to give them all this medication to say they have attention deficit disorder, but it's not an attention deficit disorder. They refuse to pay attention to anything but their passion because you put these same kids in front of a video game, and they'll play for nine hours straight. So it has nothing to do with their attention. It has to do with if I'm not passionate about this, I'm not going to give it my attention. So the kids that are coming in now, they will be changing the way. They're moving more away from the whole material stuff, and they they want community. I see my kids, they want to hang out, they want to break dance. It's not about money or I need money to go to the mall. They just want to hang with their friends, break dance, have fun, give love, and be in a state of love. So we're breeding a new generation of higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. Well, what I see here a lot in Japan is... Um by the time, and this is not all the kids, by the time they're five to six, they've completely lost touch with, with their imagination. Um, I teach on Wednesdays at, at a preschool, and I really try to focus a lot on imagination with them. And a lot of them would start saying, uh, Dekinai, which means I can't do it, I can't do it. And I was like, yes, you can, yes, you can. Just close your eyes, and I try to walk them through and they're so stuck on, on, I can't do it, which is shocking to me to hear a five-year-old, four-year-old five kid. Yeah. And completely have no imagination. I was like, am I teaching a bunch of 70-year-olds or five-year-olds? Is it, is it the society that's trying to, well, I know. They're, they're, they're it's definitely, definitely the trying society. to dumb them down and, and control them. But yeah. that's, that's news to me, a five-year-old with no imagination. Wow. Yeah, and when I was and, five, I was making up stuff every minute. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I, still, you know, I still have. But yeah, it's. I remember playing imagination games at, at that yeah. age, and even up to the age of twelve, I, I was still playing imagination games and stuff like that. But I, I just, I find it really shocking. So I'm, I'm. There's a teacher that I also teach English to, and she's very big into imagination with them. And she used to teach junior high school kids, and she says, "I'm not teaching um, junior high school kids because they're they're completely gone when it comes to imagination." And so she's focusing; she's trying to focus on young first graders and, and kindergartners to to reawaken because the way well here the thing is, and, and I'm not speaking negative on, on Japanese culture. Um, because in our own cultures, we have our, our own issues. And God knows we have our own issues. But here, because of the lack of hugging, and I feel like the, the lack of hugging and things like that, it starts to, to, to cut down on their imagination. So when I teach a lot of these young kids, the first thing they want to do is give me a big hug. And being a teacher, I'm a little worried about the whole thing because, you know, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want somebody to start saying, oh, uh, this sensei likes touching the, the kids a lot right. or something like that. But the kids always want to hug me, and they're like, oh, sensei, sensei, and they want to give me big hugs and, and kiss me on the cheeks. And I'm just like, ah, oh, they don't do this with their parents. That's why. Wow. So it's the whole thing... Um, uh, so imagine an entire society that doesn't have this. You know, for example, my wife is Japanese, and she hasn't, she didn't see her uh, when we were living in New York. She didn't see her dad for five years. So when he came over, they didn't hug, and I just found that so weird. Oh, like, wow. 
Yeah, can you imagine? They just bow to each other. Yeah, they just yeah they just bow to each other, and you could see the excitement in their face to see each other. But there's you know that. Yeah. So and I I don't mean to sound like I'm I'm making fun of somebody's society. No, 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 no. Of course you're not. You're just here again. Contrast. Yeah. Yeah, huge contrast. So. You know, when these little kids want to hug, I, I hug them, and, and sometimes they want me to pick them up, but I always make sure there's another teacher around. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I pick them up and hug them, and it's just, it's, I, it blows my mind. It just completely blows my mind. So my daughter, my daughter's 26. I, I have two kids, a daughter 26 and a, a son just turned 20. And my daughter, uh, a couple of years ago, started awakening, and... Oh my God! What an amazing young lady. Uh, she is, uh, and here's more contrast for you. You know, different cultures, uh, but she's she is. Uh, her gifts are blossoming uh, daily. I, it's changes happening for her daily, and she is. She's she's she goes, Dad. I always thought you were weird, but now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. You're going to be hearing a lot more of that this year. I always thought you were weird, but I understand. <laughs> well, I, I kind of... I kind of... <laughs> I got a... Uh, Kurt, so... Yeah. Um, I, I find it surprising that... Actually, by looking at your photo, that you have an 18-year-old child. Oh, yeah. Because I thought you were, like, uh, in your mid-20s. I didn't... I'm sorry, I don't mean to do your math. <laughs> that is the whole sexy that I maintain. But, <laughs> no, I, um, yeah, I had, a, I had my son when I was about 20, 21. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 20, 21, had him very early. But, again, it was very important because he changed my life. That, that poem that I have, I no longer write about depression, is I was on a very negative path and... I had this child, and that changed my life completely because before everyone, and again, unconditional love is such a big deal. When I had my son, that's when I understood that the Bible could not possibly be true. And what I mean by the Bible could not possibly, oh my God, you might, I don't know who. (laughs) What I mean by the Bible could not possibly be true. In the Bible, I was told about this God who allegedly gave me free, he created me and gave me free will. But even though he gave me free will, if I didn't do exactly what he wanted me to do, oh, there was going to be hell to pay. And I mean that literally. And when I had my son, I realized that, okay, I was told that God, no matter how loving I am, God is infinite times more loving. And no matter how merciful I am, God is infinite times more merciful. And here I am in my human state and human form, have a child. And I knew no matter what this kid did, I could not put him in a lake of fire for a second, much less forever. So I knew there had to be some, something was amiss with this story. Because even in my human state, where I'm not all forgiven and all loving, I could not hurt this child. So that led me to start questioning, wait a minute, does this make sense? Does that make sense? Oh, Elijah is drunk, and because some kids started teasing him, and that's what kids do. They tease drunk people to make fun of anybody that's out of the norm. So Elijah prayed to God, and God sent a beer, and the beer ate all of the kids. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound right. And God is so, <laughs> his, his ego is so fragile that he gave his beloved Abraham a son, Isaac, and figure, you know, Abraham, he's loving this boy far more than he's loving me. Okay, Abraham, take this kid to the mountains and sacrifice him. So Abraham is going up in the mountains with Isaac, and he was about, he tied him up on the altar and pulled the knife and was about to slay him. And God said, okay, it's obvious you love me more than you love Isaac, so go ahead and sacrifice that ram. That just sounds like a bunch of nonsense. Or it might be a metaphor, I'm not sure, but it doesn't sound like an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing being. It sounds like someone who's very insecure, very childlike. And <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, sure. And just, you know, he doesn't know what's going on. He, he knows he's all-knowing, and then he's coming and saying, Adam, where are you? I, damn, I done misplaced Adam again. I can't find this dude. So it just didn't make any sense. But my son was the one who led me to start looking at that stuff. The other thing that my son did was I was always told, do not question God. 
But my son, Daddy, why is the sky blue? Why is this, Daddy, Daddy? And he had a million and one questions. And I never got tired of answering the question because I knew all he wanted to do was learn. He didn't know and he wanted some information. So if I'm a father and I can allow my son to question any question, to ask any question, why is God the father figure so afraid of me asking questions? So again, it didn't make sense. So I started searching, and that's what led to the rise in consciousness and the awakening where, okay, I read the Bible cover to cover, read the Quran, started studying different religions, and I found there's an underlining theme. Yes, there's a source, a creator God, and it's loving and all this stuff, but a lot of other things were added to manipulate and to control the people who are listen to this stuff, because bear in mind, the Bible wasn't for the common man, the Bible was for the elite, and the, the elite explained to the common man what was in the Bible. When black Americans first found the Bible, it was given to them by their slave masters, and the only verse that they were taught was, slave, obey your masters. So it was obviously used as a tool to manipulate. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you familiar with Zachariah Sitchin's work? Absolutely. Um, so, with everything you said, what's your feeling? Do you think that that quote unquote God was an alien race manipulating? Cause it really sounds this, especially the with, all- with Ankel and, and and Lil. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to me. It's the only story that I've found. I've read several books with several because again, if you go back to the Hopi tradition and you go back to a lot of different traditions, they have these two creator gods, the twins. And a lot of different traditions have this story in it. And uh, also, the two comments that they speak about the, that are coming, again, they're, they're the two twins. And you f- keep finding this story over and over. And if you really do the research and study, you will see that absolutely the human gene pool was manipulated. The, the two strands of DNA, that's not what we started off with. We started off with so much more. When you look back at Atlantis, because people are trying to say, well, Atlantis was just a myth. No, it was not. Because they still cannot explain the pyramids. They can't explain all these different um, wonders of the world that we still couldn't build to this day. We don't have a technology to build a pyramid the way it's built in Egypt. We still don't have that technology. We still can't figure out how to do it. So you can't dismiss that we were so much more and somebody watered us down and enslaved us, put us in a grid, a system where we start worshiping all these material stuff that really means nothing and we got away from the greatness that we were. Absolutely. Mm. I as far as pyramids, I found pictures. Um, the Chinese pyramids. Uh, There's the, thousands of pyramids on this planet. Yeah, the underwater pyramids. I mean, if if that doesn't put a question in your mind, I don't know what will. Have you seen anything on that Bosnian pyramid? Yeah, I, I have the picture on the website too. No, I haven't seen it. I heard about it, but haven't had a chance to look at it. But all of this stuff resonates with me, Tom and Ramon. I mean, the inner earth, that resonates with me. Um, the, the, the pole shift kind of changed. I mean, you're going to find, uh, what are these beasts? At, at one point, they found, they found drawings in the desert of Egypt of elephants. That at one point, it was a place where elephants lived. And you found the woolly mammoth that died and it had grass, undigested food in the stomach. So at some point it was grazing, and then within seconds the place froze over. So a lot of things happen that we're not being told and not being explained to us, but there's so much more to our existence. There's so much more to this planet. There's so much more to who we are than meets the eye, and we're beginning to remember. Yep. Uh, I mean, one of the stories, uh, um, this is a story out of Antarctica, the uh, Lake Vostok. Um, one of the rumors on the internet, and I can't remember, I believe it was either Red Ice or, or the Veritas show, one of the guests, I'm trying to remember the guests. Um, anyway, how he believes that the, the, that lake has been um, frozen over for thousands of years, and underneath you have a water source that's untouched for who knows how long. And according to him, he believes that that water, they're figuring out how that water naturally separates the heavy water from light water. And how this light water is, will allow us to live longer, will help our, ourselves repair uh, better. Have you heard anything about that? 
No, with the exception of Dr. Emoto's, um, Emoto. Dr. Emoto's work, I haven't really done or heard much regarding water. What I do know is that we, again, going back to the frequency that we're in, I believe that 5.8 hertz frequency, because I listen to it a lot, and I, I, when I listen to it with headphones, I definitely feel something change within my body. I believe our DNA is being waken up. I believe right now, going back to what you said about water, I believe more than ever we need a lot more water in our bodies because our DNA works with the water, and we're in very transformational times right now. Mm -hmm. So, so we, I did the uh, uh, Dr. Moto's rice experiment here, and I uh, actually have it documented on the website, uh, Effects of uh, Consciousness on Matter. Uh, it's kind of amazing to be to it, it's such a simple experiment to do that uh, uh, anybody can do it right in their own home uh, uh, are you familiar with the rice experiment no well, what he does uh, what you do is you take three containers obviously uh, well I just use three glasses myself uh, three equal amounts of rice and three equal amounts of water and you put them in the containers and you one of the containers, uh, every day you say, thank you, I love you, too. The second container, you say, you idiot, I hate you. And you, <laughs> you, you ignore the third container. And it's amazing. The results are absolutely amazing after, uh, you know, uh, 30, 45 days. Uh, no, what, hold on, let me get this right. The, you put the rice in container of water, right? Correct. Okay. Are they in the same? Like, can I have them on the same table? I should put them in three different. I have them. I have them on the same table. I have them actually okay. on a windowsill. Myself okay. is the way I did it. I am going to do that. And and uh, it's just absolutely amazing the results. You just the uh, the love the one you tell you that that you love that it stays pristine. It stays perfect for. I mean, mine. I how long ago did I start mine, Ramon? I still have it on uh, the window. 45 so. days. Um, uh, it's probably, at least, yeah, at least 45. It's, it's closer to two months, I think. Uh, uh, but the, the rice in the, the love container is still looks like the first day. And it soaked uh, up all the water. Yeah, it soaked up all the water in the glass. And and uh, the second glass, uh, it it decaying, uh, you know, a little. It gets look, looks pretty... Uh, pretty uh, nasty and everything but the one you absolutely ignore is by wow. far <laughs> nasty uh, and it just proved one thing to me that that any any attention I mean th this related this really struck home to me with children mm -hmm. any attention for your child is better than no attention at all mm -hmm. but, wow. that's powerful yeah, yeah, do do that. I mean, three of them, right? I'm going to do it and videotape it every day. Mm. Yeah, you I'm see going all to give them, right? a lot of love. I'm going to curse one out in my Jamaican <laughs> accent. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I'm just not going to speak to one. I turn my back to the other one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, so, sounds like so, yeah, it's a 45 like days look for it. I have a video, a time lapse video. There you go. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. I like it. Sure. It sounds like one of my family reunions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, um. so, see, I, I learned a lot tonight. This was very, very interesting and very enlightening. I really appreciate it. There's always something. There's always some place that you're going to be blessed. And it's just great, man. I appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's uh, it reminds me of a quote that uh, James Gilliland loves to say. Um, well, is it like um, the mind you seek is the mind you'll find? Mm. So he he talks that about when it comes to uh, contacting with ETs, because as you know, he's like had a lot of contacts. Right. And just I mean, even outside the ET world, just day to day. Uh, I remember for me as a teenager, some of the people that I used to hang out with were very depressing. Mm -hmm. And I started, as I started, you know, changing myself, I started finding all of a sudden these people who were very enlightening. Um, 
it, did you find that for yourself as well, or? As far as the right okay. teachers and the right right people coming into your life at the right time. Yeah, but just like you were saying, they they kind of reflected where I was at the time when they came, and they were just a little higher. But as my attitude changed and the teachers that came in, they changed and they became, okay, let's, let's back up for a second. When I was into seeing all the contrast, the police brutality, the, the injustice, those were the teachers that I attracted, the people who were very much into the police brutality and the injustice. But as I kind of let that go and move on to higher consciousness, then I attracted those higher teachers. So we kind of, even us, what we're doing, we teach what we need to learn. It's not that we've mastered this stuff, so we're teaching it. We're still students. We're students for art. And as we learn it, we put it out and we teach what we need to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What is your um, feeling with the whole thing in uh, uh, that footage in Israel? I, I see that you have a, uh, a cut of it on your, um, was it part three? Or, no, part five. What foot is in Israel? The, the uh, UFO that dropped down over the dome. Oh, over the dome. You know, I think we're so, well, let, let, me, let me choose my words carefully. <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 for, for, for us to really believe that, okay, if you look at nature, nature wastes nothing. Everything is recycled. But we have this arrogant idea that we have all these planets and just sitting there for no reason, just to entertain us. We can't even see them with the, na the naked eye. But there's no other consciousness, no other life form but us. It's so arrogant. <laughs> and to see this UFO came down, and I saw the video, and uh, it took, it's almost as if it took a snapshot of Israel. Like, you know, let me just take a picture of your consciousness right now to see what's going on. And I just believe that more and more, well, I'm speaking to the choir because you know this, we're going to be seeing this stuff more and more until it becomes an ever. oh, there's an ET. You'll know it's going to become an everyday occurrence. So our minds are being prepared and the governments are beginning to release information. But they know what's coming. They know what's down the pike. So they know, well, might as well let's get the people prepared and start showing more stuff because there was a time when none of this would be shown, it would be dismissed, and no one would speak about it. So we're getting to, you know as well as I do, we're getting to a point of disclosure. And chances are it's going to be this year, sometime this year, very early next year. But we're getting to a point where the, the presence of extraterrestrials can no longer be denied. Absolutely. We are not alone. We've never been alone. And we will never be alone. Mm -hmm. I found it amazing that Farrakhan was talking about it. No, Farrakhan has been talking about ETs for decades. Oh, it's has he? Never in the mainstream. Farrakhan, back in the 80s, Farrakhan was talking about a mothership before I ever knew what a mothership was. I thought he was cursing. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely. Farrakhan wow. was cursing. If, if if Farrakhan used to say that Elijah Muhammad is not dead, he's up in the mothership. And the mother is going to come a time when the mothership will return and it will get the chosen people. You just never hear that on Main Street. What you hear is Farrakhan, I hate you, I hate you. No, 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 it's very censored. But Farrakhan has been talking about E.T. for over two decades. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I, I, I learned something new what today. What did he say about this? I didn't hear. I didn't know he made a comment. What did he have to say? Um, it was. I'm trying to find an unedited version of it. I I can't find an unedited version, but it, he just mentions how it exists, pretty much. Yeah, he uh, for for two decades, Tarakan has been saying that Elijah Muhammad is uh, in a mothership. He's on the mothership. And he doesn't speak about this in the media, it's in private circles, or sometimes you hear it on different tapes. And he'll speak about the mothership it will return, and when America faces her judgment, the mothership will take their people up before America faces the wrath of her, uh, her karma. Hmm. That's, so do you think that that also ties into like the Red Kachina? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And that would be my best answer because I, I believe 
that the Hopi prophecies, there's a lot to it. But I also believe that nothing is written in stone in the sense that I know our consciousness makes a difference. Like, we could have a 6.9 earthquake someplace, but based on the consciousness, we had a 4.7, something of the sort. So I know things are always changing, and as more people awake, but from what I've been hearing and understanding, there will be some sort of off-planet exodus, but again, I don't know. This is just stuff I've read, stuff I've heard, and I've heard it in so many different circles regarding different prophecies and stuff, so there is a possibility, but the honest answer would be, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's actually one of the best answers. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So have, have you actually, have you seen a ship? Have you seen a UFO? I have seen, <laughs> in Florida, one night it was maybe about 8 o'clock at night, dark. But there was a cloud in the sky, and the cloud was brilliant, like the sun was shining on the cloud. And it just, and I took a picture of it on my cell phone and the cell phone, my Blackberry. The Blackberry broke, so I don't have the picture anymore. And we got in the car, my wife and I, and started driving, following this cloud. And we got to, like, we're, we're, we're going along and turning along these roads and farm. When we get to a part where we figure the cloud was maybe four miles up, the streets were blocked, and the cops told us, oh, they just robbed a store. You can't go down there. But it didn't seem like there was a robbery. They, too, many, too many places were blocked off. And that's the only experience where I've actually seen something where I know that's not a cloud. I don't know what it is. It wasn't flying. It was just sitting there. But at the time, at night that it was, there's no reason this cloud should be so brilliant. And there were other clouds in the sky, but they were dark. The next time you're up in Washington, you should uh, uh, make a point to stop by East City Ranch. Yeah, definitely. Spend, spend the night out there and do some meditation out in the prayer circle. And, and uh, it's absolutely amazing, the, the energy there. The, you know, it's one of those places here on the planet that... Uh, uh, one of the focal points of the energy matrix, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but right there at the foot of Mount Adams, it's uh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm an energy fiend, and I, I, I could I when I first went to that place, uh, I was just floored with the energy that was there. And I, I've seen so I saw some things there that uh, you know there's no explanation for it except for uh, intelligent mm -hmm. intelligent beings or craft you know, so. I, I definitely believe in, in energy and energy vortexes because again I wrote I need you to remember part one four years ago went to Sedona and wrote part two three um, six months ago and from visiting Sedona wrote part two three four and five within less than eight or nine months yeah. And it was the energy do, that I was feeling after I left Sedona. Do you think we'll have uh, more parts to that, or you're pretty much done with that segment? Um, I'm done with that. I might do something. Because the other thing that I want to touch on is, even though I'm doing I need to remember, but not everybody's there, and a lot of us have wounds that we need to heal and I need to I can't just tell you okay you're God and you well I don't feel like God I'm hurting you know my husband just left me my so I the next thing that I'm going to do is probably touching on the healing some wounds because I all believe that we teach what we need to know and we're to a certain degree all wounded healers so I want to go back into even my childhood with the relationship that I had with my mom and how that affected relationships with different women how I couldn't really afford for them to love me because I felt I was unworthy. And this stuff men don't really talk about, but I really believe if we get in there and start looking at how can we heal, then we could rise up to the knowing that indeed we are God. We, we do have a connection, and there's no separate separation between God and us. So I want to go back and start addressing some of the wounds that I felt maybe because I moved so fast, so quickly from the mundane to the miraculous that I might have left out some stuff in the middle, so I want to go back and address some of those wounds. But stuff will still come to me on that level 
and I'll still put it out. But as far as I need you to remember series, I figure after I said, you are God, there's nothing more for me to tell you based on that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, as far as the wounds, um, for some of it, because I've had a lot of people tell me, it's like, you know, I'll tell them, go into meditation and, and, you know, try to heal your wounds. And they're like, how do I do that? You know, um, what is some of the things that you personally do um, to help heal yourself with some of the stuff you, you've overcome? Just by talking with you, I can tell you've overcome a lot. So with with some of the things you've overcome, what's some of the... Okay, I, I believe, really believe, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That, that's very essential. What I mean by that, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Let's say you look at your life and you see your parents as two random people who got together in the middle of the night, then here you come, then you weren't really wanted, there was a lot of bills involved, you were a pain in the ass, they had to struggle, and you were very much abused, uh, you had older siblings who didn't really welcome you to the family because now they're not getting enough attention and everything is random and you're carrying all this pain. And again, let's add religion into the mix and your parents are going to church so they should know better. So for 60, 70 years you're carrying your life because my mom is about 65, her dad is in her 90s and she's still bitter with the stuff that happened to her when she was a child. Because how could her dad treat her this way? Her dad should have known better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one way of looking at it. Now, let's look at it another way to say there are no accidents. And before we came here, we made a soul agreement. And I said, you know what? I want to get into the world and I want to teach forgiveness. But I have no idea what this forgiveness stuff is, but I know I want to teach it. And then I had another spirit say, well, you know what? I could come in and be your father, and I could really abuse the hell out of you so you could find out what forgiveness is, and then you could work on that because you're going to need to have to forgive me. And another spirit kind of said, well, I could be the mother, and I could even add more pain to that. How about that? Now you will really learn some forgiveness. And if you look at it from that point of view, then you can't really be mad at them because they were really doing your favor. Now, this is just to be a story that I made up in my head so I can cope, but it works for me. So I have this idea that this was all a soul agreement that we made to help me remember to get to another part, and they decide we'll come in and we'll do this, and hopefully you don't hate us for it, Kirk. Hopefully you'll remember that we're just doing you a favor, and as a matter of fact, we're doing you a huge favor because we're going to accumulate some karma that might take us several dozen lifetimes to pay off just because we're trying to help you get on your path. So it's all love. We're doing this in love, and I need you to remember that when you're feeling that, how could we do this to you? We're just trying to help you be on your path. So with that type of lie, maybe, or maybe it could be the honest truth that I tell to myself, these stories, when you change the way you look at things, so once I start looking at my life differently to say, well, it was divinely ordained, it was planned, and I had these soul agreements with all these people, and the woman that went out and broke my heart and cheated on me, I had all these soul agreements and all this stuff to pay back, I can no longer be upset, I can no longer be mad, and really there's nothing to forgive because we agreed to it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean... I like the way you put that out. Yeah. yeah. Or I could just have been sitting in, uh, you know, Tumi Ganja Fields in Jamaica. So, it's <laughs> just... <laughs> it's... it's, it's uh, and you didn't call me in time over? <laughs> Now, you know what, I say that, but I've never even been to one of them. I've never, you know, people just assume because I'm Jamaican, I'm supposed to know about that, but it's part of the culture. But anyway, I I use that analogy and that story to really put myself in a different state of mind so I can release a lot of stuff really quickly. Because, again, we're still a human, the ego is still involved, and you still feel pain. So what really is difficult is as you forgive someone, they keep coming back and opening the same wound. They keep doing the same thing over and over and over. You know, and it's very difficult to keep reminding yourself, okay, well, we had this agreement that I would let it go, and then you would come back and you would step on my toes, and it would hurt again. And as you keep telling yourself that, it's very easy to move to the next level. And also, 
if you have the intention in your heart that I just want to evolve and I want to get to another level of consciousness, I want to get to a place where I'm in bliss and none of this matters because the only thing that's really upset is my ego. The spirit doesn't care about who did what. The spirit doesn't care how many people he slept with or she slept with. All the spirit wants to do is have the experience. That's what we came here for, to have the experience. So if I can get the ego out the way and just enjoy the experience right now, you know, I'm in traffic and I see people yelling and cursing, doing all sorts of silly things with their fingers, and the spirit is just saying, right now we're doing traffic. Spirit doesn't care one way or another. So if you could keep that in mind and remember that, it will make the path so much easier, and then you'll be going with the flow. You won't have too much resistance, and life, again, will become smooth sailing. Mm. Yep. There's uh, one thing, uh, um, as far as when you... When you forgive somebody, there's a difference between forgiving somebody and becoming the victim and then forgiving somebody and releasing it. I wanted you to talk a little bit about that because I don't want people to think that forgiving somebody just means you're going to sit there and take the same abuse over and over again. Right. You you have to definitely have boundaries. You have to know that, okay, (laughs) I don't want to go down this road anymore. I don't want to play this game, but people... You, you have prey and you have predators, and people kind of get a sense of, you know, who's willing to put up with what. There was this job that I worked when I had a job, and I remember every Monday morning, the manager, Tom, office, John, office, Mike, office, Terry, office, Kirk. When you get a chance, can I see the office, please? Because he just couldn't bring that nonsense to me. So people kind of get a sense of, <laughs> you know, are, you, are you willing to, to let them abuse you. And once you stand in your power and say, listen, you know, we're not going down this path. This just ain't going to happen. People kind of back off. But if you, there's a saying that says you make yourself a sheep and the wolf is ready. So it's okay to forgive, but don't keep going in the situation. Because if the lessons keep repeating, then you obviously haven't learned the lesson. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It works that way. Uh-huh. So, how are we with Tom, a time, Tom? <laughs> oh, well, I think we, we're, we about got this hour wrapped up, too. But this has been great. It's been flying by. Yeah, I know. It does that. Kurt, any uh, last words of advice? Anything you want to put out there? Again, I, I would definitely going back to the listeners and letting them know we're in very transformational times and it will be best as things speed up it will be best to slow down as things quicken it will be best to get into that inner space and just be quiet because again what we spoke about earlier the energy you can definitely tell there's a shift in energy a lot of stuff is going on and right now people who are not very grounded as this system crumbles as the matrix crumbles they don't know what to hold on to they know what to make sense of and it's best to just be quiet to go within and trust that guidance because you are being guided and no one is alone and there's a divine voice but it doesn't yell it doesn't scream and you will never be here be able to hear it through all the noise so you have to definitely be silent yep i will echo that yeah Likewise, I I have to say thank you so much, Kurt. I mean, I I've said this before on the show, but I always find it such an honor when um when 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 people uh, get back to us right away and say, yeah, sure, I'll do it. It it really makes it makes us feel good because it it shows to me that okay, this person is really trying to get their message out there. Um, I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it, Ramon. I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you. Yeah, and, and thank you, man, because, I, I mean, the learning experience that that I've gotten just from your videos, is it's amazing. And I'm sure a lot of us, because it's a huge talk on Facebook. Yeah. So uh, we will have, we have, well, I think we have all the, Ramon, didn't you put all the videos on our uh, on Kirk's page for the? I in- put one to five. Uh, the one I didn't put was pursue your passion. Okay. Which I'll yeah, put that one up. If you could put pursue your passion up for me because that's the theme. And again, the two to CD. Once they watch pursue your passion, they'll definitely be moved if they want to know more. 
the, the list yeah. is to go to the website, com and get the two to CD because that is just making such a difference. And Pursue Your Passion is basically where it all started. That was what gave me the, the catalyst to move forward and to do what I'm doing right now, just, again, pursuing my passion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all the links are right here on the page that you're listening to this on. And, uh, and you can just click on his photo and it'll take you right to his website. Yeah, we got... Uh, Everything's right there. So, well, Kurt, thank you so much again, and uh, thank everybody for listening. Uh, we hope everybody got as much out of it as Ramon and I have. And uh, you guys have, uh, if you've gone this far, you heard the first and or the third and the fifth part of. I need you to remember. I would suggest you listen to the whole series. They are fantastic. So, actually, I would suggest you listen to everything he has because yeah. I mean there's not one thing I've heard that I'd be like ah oh, that's no good I mean well, everything's <laughs> been on fire it's, it's once they start once they listen to that they're going to want to listen to the more so uh, yeah he's got his, uh, anywhere anywhere you're going to be soon that people can probably go listen to you um, most of my engagements are private because I'm doing stuff boo <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> what I intend to do I intend to start doing more stuff locally and probably start planning. Not probably. Let me take that back. I intend to start doing my own seminars and workshops. So pretty soon I'll make that available. But if you want to bring me out and do something in your town, in your area, just contact me and let's, let's make it happen. Let's put it together because right now it's, we're in a time and an energy of grassroots and community service, and we could build something beautiful if we believe that we have the power to do it. Don't believe that, okay, well, I'll just wait till you get here. Now, if you want me there, invite me, and we'll make it happen. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely like to see people like yourself uh, uh, being invited more to the a lot of these um, conferences, the UFO conferences and spiritual conferences that right. they're having. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so we, we, we'll uh, see if we can't work on something on that. Anyways, uh, well, uh, if you hang on a second here, Kurt, before uh, don't hang up right away, and I wanted to chat with you a second off the air. Uh, I want to sure. thank everybody listening again. And uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. Uh, you got anything else, Ramon? I just want to give a thank you to everybody for listening and also give a great thanks to the 47 different countries that are listening to us. Oh, yes, absolutely. 47 yeah. different countries. Yeah, 47 yeah. countries. Yeah, uh, we're a surprise ourselves because we've only been on the air for, what, three months now, Tom? Yeah, three months. Yeah, so... Not, not quite three months. We're coming up on three months. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, so we're babies that, in this. confirmation of the energy that we're speaking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we don't have Jamaica, unfortunately, so maybe you can <laughs> call we'll, me a cousin. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, it will happen. All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.